Good evening. Hundreds of travellers and hundreds of police officers are tonight continuing their cat and mouse game around the West Country. So far, the police, the police have managed to stop the travellers congregating for a huge free festival over the coming weekend. Most activity is centred in the north of Avon and in South Gloucestershire. In a moment, we examine the extent of the police force's powers. But first, Graham Gardner describes the latest situation in the laybys between Gloucester and Stroud. Backed into a corner with nowhere to go, the travellers call a meeting on the side of a road in Gloucestershire. It's not only the heat they and their animals find oppressive. As police sweat it out nearby, alternative locations are under discussion, but no definite decisions are made. This was the A38 earlier today with hundreds of travellers' vehicles holed up around the county. This motley collection of vans, caravans, buses and lorries is one of several parked in laybys at Morton Valence near Gloucester. Police monitored the situation closely, but there was an easy atmosphere after the travellers had been turned away from their original destination, Rodborough Common near Stroud, where they claimed they were invited by the owner of Rodborough Fort. The lady herself came up to the site on the A46 where we were parked on the layby, handed out leaflets and said we could go up there. When we finally moved off, the police had blocked all the entrances up to the common so nobody could get there. Joanne Willis-Williams bought Rodborough Fort six years ago. Her falcon Rufus, she says, is a symbol of the ancient privileges she acquired as Lord of the Manor, including the right to hold a fair on the common nearby. That translates today as a pop concert. With the police helicopter patrolling overhead, she admitted, although regular users would not have liked it, she would have welcomed the travellers to the common. Everybody has a right to go on to common land, if they break the law, then it's up to the police to do something about it. But it's not for anybody else to obstruct their, anyone's progress onto common land. To discriminate between Mr. Richman in his Europa camper costing 20,000 and the, a local hippie in his home, travelling home, that's fully taxed, is, is just not fair. At the moment, it's a standoff. Police say the travellers will not be allowed to stay in Gloucestershire. The travellers say they don't know where they'll go. As both sides eyed each other from across the road, the stalemate continued throughout the afternoon. The travellers had expected to be moved on and were baffled by the police tactics. To me, the police just seem very confused and don't know what to do. They've, they're, they've got to think about their own communities as well. Um, and they seem more concerned about the local residents and the local community, which is obvious, they've got to feel like that. But late this afternoon, the travellers began to move from the site. The waiting game was over, at least for the time being. Just where they're headed next is still not known for sure. Graham Gardner, BBC News West, with the travellers in Gloucestershire. Travellers have also been massing around Ingleston Common and North Avon, where a free festival was held last year. So far, they've been prevented from getting onto the land. But can this annual invasion continue? And is there a long-term alternative to the expensive police operations currently underway? Malcolm Frith has this report. This was the scene today around the normally peaceful Ingleston Common in North Avon. Farmers building barricades to protect their property against the hundreds of travellers who are determined to invade their land and hold an illegal festival. Everyone wants to avoid the scenes like these when Wiltshire police moved in to prevent a festival near Stonehenge and caused the so-called Battle of the Beanfield. Nevertheless, the travellers in North Avon are adamant that there will be a festival of some sort this weekend. We're having it. Yes, definitely. We don't want any trouble. We want to be really peaceful, don't we, Martin? Yeah. Well, that's what the plan is. Um, nobody knows where they Today, both sides know exactly how they stand in terms of the law. But what is the law? Under Section 39 of the Public Order Act that was introduced in 1986, senior police officers can remove trespassers if two or more people have entered the land as trespassers and they are on the land with the sole purpose of staying there for any length of time. But police also have to satisfy themselves that the trespassers have caused damage to land or property or that they've used threatening or abusive words and behaviour or they have between them brought 12 or more vehicles onto the land. Throughout today, it's been a game of cat and mouse. Ingleston Common has become a virtual no-go area for the travellers. They've parked on laybys, waiting for an opportunity to move onto land somewhere else. They're moving from uh, Avon, they're moving into Gloucestershire. Where they go to a site where the landowner does not wish them to go, they're being told that they can't stay. 
Simply then, what is your message to travellers this coming weekend? They must only go to land where they have an invitation to go to, where the landowner is happy for them to go to it. If they do not, and they go to land where the landowner does not wish them to go, then the full weight of the law will be brought to bear upon them. Neither side knows exactly what the other side is doing. The travellers say they will hold their festival this coming weekend. The police say that they will stop them trespassing on any land. So tonight, there's an uneasy calm here on Ingleston Common. But now one Avon County councillor believes the annual confrontation between them and the police is turning into a stupid situation and she's proposing to organise a legal festival next year. Well, clearly everything that's happening at the moment is confrontational. We have the police saying no way will they have a festival. We have the travellers saying yes we will, we're going to. That is the ingredients for violence. What I would propose that is seriously considered for next year is that we get a legal festival that it is run correctly, that it meets all the environmental needs, that the noise levels are looked at, that we look at road access, we ensure that professional people are involved, so that it is run professionally, and we give the youth a festival. But with the growing subculture of rave parties now starting to join up with the other subculture of new age travellers, many people are calling for a fresh look at the whole problem. Malcolm Frith, BBC News West, North Avon.